Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is how much horsepower can you increase by port matching your intake manifold? Well, I did a dyno test and I could tell you that. The answer is seven, in case you're wondering, because you don't want to skip through the whole video, whatever. Seven. But we'll get to this, all of it in this video. So let me grab the camera and I can show you what port matching actually is and I'll show you the dyno results and how it came to be and also some things with it. But by the way, before you like, oh my gosh, seven horsepower, that can't be correct. I'm going to go ahead and say this because you need to hear this right off. It's not universal because it really depends on how bad the intake manifold is versus how close it is to the match of the heads. So the intake manifold I'll be using today in this dyno test that was used was a Elderbrock 2896. And it was matched to a set of Promax 317 heads. The match was close, not far, far off. So if it was something that was really, really tiny, the chances are you could gain way more horsepower from the port matching than what I did. There was also another problem that came with it because even though it's port matched, it isn't port matched perfectly anyway because the manifold would not allow it, which I'll talk about in a second. But I want to start off with that before you think, well, Eric Weigerner said it was only worth seven horsepower, so why should I do it? It may be seven horsepower in this combination, but it could be considerably more on another combination or it could be less. So this is just one test. After all, I do plan to do another one, which I'll also talk about in the video. The particular engine that was used for this dyno mule is the one you just saw running. That was actually a dyno pull from it. The engine's the 540 Big Block Chevy. I refer, refer to it as the Big Block Chevy 540 dyno mule. It is a 12.3 uh, compression ratio. It's got a set of Promax 317 heads on it that have been milled down to 110 cc's to get that 12.3 compression ratio. They do have a 50 degree valve job on the intake. There are no pull work done whatsoever. Um, it's got a solid roller camshaft from Competent. This one's a 275, 288, 820 lips on intake and 808 on the exhaust, 112 lobe separation, scat rotating assembly, ro rotating assembly, a Merlin World Products Merlin 4 block, which is outstanding. Love that block. But that's what it is. In the particular dyno test, if you go back and watch, the, we were testing the oil pan to see what it did, but I did switch the intake. So that's what you're going to get to see, and that's where these numbers come from. So just to explain what port matching is, it's pretty much this. Sometimes you'll buy an intake manifold, and usually, typically, they're smaller than what the head is because they don't know exactly what intake or what head you're going to put your their intake manifold on. So there's variations. I wish there was one common size for, say, all big block Chevys or all small block Chevys or Chrysler's, whatever. There's just not. Some have more corner radius like this particular one. So... Port matching is essentially getting this manifold opening to match with the head itself. And that can vary, like I said, depending on the head. Typically, you only go in a few inches until you get it to blend right. And that's all port matching is, just like this. Now, I told you I was having a problem with the Edelbrock 2896 from getting it to match because it didn't match up correctly. is because of this. Sometimes, and this happens more than you would think, the manifold itself is already bigger than the head. And it may only be bigger in certain spots or shifted over in certain spots. So for instance, sometimes I will have this side of the manifold. I know we got a Chevy here, but it doesn't matter. LSs do it too. Or um, you'll have a, this port here might be shifted up, but on the other side, the other one will be shifted down. Or the worst one for me is actually where it's shifted over. And that's what actually happened with the Elderbrock 2896. So just to explain, I got the roof to match and the floor to match. This side did match. The side that didn't match was one corner on each one. So a corner actually would be this corner here and that corner there because they're essentially an X. And what happened was, if you look in here, this is not that manifold, but you would see part of the head like where you see my finger. So what you would think, well, fine, just shift the, the whole manifold that direction, right? And that will get it to go this way. Well, when I shifted it that direction, it made... That port right there do the exact same thing. Then the, it would face more this way. So 
If that happens to you, in case you're wondering what you do, you split the difference. You get them where they're the closest there and on that side. So if it's, say, 15 thousandths overhanging on this side, it's 15 thousandths over here. What you don't want is where one's perfect and the other one's 60 thousandths or 30 thousandths way off. That's essentially what happened. It was only that port here and this port here did the same thing. So the ones across from each other. Those are the only ones that did not port match correctly. So that may have affected some of the power, obviously, as well. So, but anyway, let's get to the numbers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and preface this also. This is probably not the most exact perfect test you've ever wanted because there was something that happened during it. So let me preface it by saying this. The previous dyno session with the 540 uh, dyno mule, it had a Rodex, I call it the turtle intake was on it. I had left it on when that session was got over. Right? And we had changed to a different oil pan, a Moroso billet piece, and a Titan uh, gear rotor oil pump. And then that started session two. So that was session one with the 540. And with that particular intake, it made 842. Well, when we change pans, just the changing of pans, so this is where it's not a perfect A-B comparison, just changing pans, the power went up to 873. That's a gain of 31 horsepower and 9 foot-pounds of torque. I bring this up because I don't think the oil pan had any effect whatsoever on the power difference between the um, manifolds. You know, I know you're like, you're confusing the crap out of me. What do you mean? What I would like to say is, well, what I did is I had the engine together and I took the intake off, port match it, put the intake back on and re on it. I didn't do that. Instead, what happened was I dynoed the engine, changed the oil pan, then I put the port match intake on. So there was two changes before that. But nothing had been changed from this particular run besides just the pan, and that got 31 horsepower gain, 9 foot-pounds of torque. Um, and it, this was the previous video. It did a graph that looks something like this. You with me so far? So there you can see how much that was worth the pan. But you're like, what's this got to do with the port match? Hold on. Uh, let's go to here. Just pause my video for just a second. Okay. Now, this is where I switched the intake manifold. So what you see in the black line, this is the 2896 before. This was before and this was after. Now it looks like, oh my God, you did gain more than what you said. You said it only gained seven. Hold on there. This was before with the old pan. So the old pan, not port matched, and the red lines with the new pan, port matched. So you're like, wow, it gains a ton, but that's not a fair comparison. That doesn't really work for port matching. You're right. If you remember correctly, I said I gained 31 horsepower from the oil pan and nine foot pounds of torque. And that was, a, that was an A-B test because nothing changed besides the pan and the pump. And that gained 31 horsepower. Now we just switch the intake if we take away the 31 horsepower from the gain that it had, and we take away the nine foot pounds of torque from the gain it has, that gives us, that means the port match gains seven horsepower and eight foot pounds of torque. In other words, we took away the gains from the pan, and that's what it shows how much the port match was worth, which was seven horsepower and eight foot pounds of torque. So not as much as you would think, uh, but again, this is a 900 horsepower engine too. It's, something could be said of, well, what if this engine was only making 425? Would the gains be smaller? Maybe, maybe not. This is just one scenario. And it's, and I will admit, this is probably not the best way to test, but I do think the oil pan did not change. The, the oil pressure, the power gain from that pan does not change because the, it didn't automatically, now that we switch intake manifolds, the oil pan and pumps now making more power because of the manifold. It's the manifold that's making more power. It has nothing to affect on that. Well, that's not very confusing. I'm just trying to say, you can say those gains are 31 horsepower for sure. That additional gain was the port match. Something else I should put out, put out about the port match as well. This one, and this is usually how I send them out. They have a 60 grit that I use on the bottom, on, on, sorry, on the whole thing. So it looks like this whenever I port match. It looks pretty good. And I like to send it out that way because it, it looks good and it's a good representation. That is not how I sent it, and that's not how I dyno tested the 2896. I left it rough. I mean, it had burr finished, in other words. And I'd say, why'd you do that? Truthfully, I forgot that I did that. I thought I'd completely, completely done it until I took it to the dyno. I was like, oh crap, I didn't. I didn't. Forgot the 60 grit step. Um, and dyno testing before, before someone says, well, burr's worth more power. Remember, I have dyno tested that. 
where I did a burr finish manifold, then I 60 gridded it, the 60 grit made more power. So maybe there might have been more there, or maybe none at all, or maybe a loss. But what I could say for sure in this particular combination, that port match was worth nine horse, sorry, seven horsepower and eight foot pounds of torque. So is it worth doing? I think so. But anyway, sorry, not the most conclusive video that you would want from this one. But don't worry, this manifold right here, the reason why I have it out here, this is a Hulk 23 by Chris Ratko. Hopefully I can see it. Yep. 4150 flange. I've port matched it. We're going to go back on the dyno on the small block Chevy. I'm going to test this. But guess what else is going back on the small block Chevy? One of the intakes that was tested on the small block Chevy was the Elderbrock 2970. I have taken out the cloverleaf and tested that already. The one thing that has not been done to it is port matching. But now I have. I've port matched it to the head. So that one will be a direct. So once it goes on, the only change that would have happened between that manifold is it's been port matched. So, and then it could compare it to this one. That would be an interesting test to see if the 2970 will beat this one. Because right now, 2970 is the best 4500 flange that's been on there. And it's been this, well, I take that back. A heavily modified 2892 beat it. Nothing else has. So if this one beats it, I'd be shocked. But we're going to test and find out. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Sorry I couldn't give you the better results that you were looking for with that, but uh, you get some information I'm trying to get at. Guys, thanks for watching. I do not port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. You guys take care.